Today we're going to learn about the trig ratios. There is a really cute way to remember the trig ratios. Um, it is so ka toa. Now, there's a lot of little stories out there and memorization device, but basically what I've written right here is describing what's in the blue box here. We have sine of theta, and we always have sine of some angle, is equal to the opposite of that angle over the hypotenuse. So if you look to the right in this red triangle, you'll see theta right here, and the opposite of theta is the side that is across from the angle, okay? And all of Sokotoa is referencing the lengths of the sides, and we're taking sine of the theta that's being represented there. So be very careful about our placement of theta. We'll see an example of that, okay? Same deal with cosine. He's adjacent, ah, uh, for the A, and over the hypotenuse, H, hypotenuse of the triangles across from the 90 degrees always. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent. And you'll see we have the reciprocal functions right underneath them. Basically, it just takes the reciprocal. The cute way to remember that is you're just flipping the fraction. Whatever's in the bottom for one comes up top. Whatever's in the top goes to the bottom. So you don't have to memorize cosecant, secant, and cotangent as long as you already have sine, cosine, and tangent down. And that's why we have this cute little mnemonic here called SOCATOA. It just takes care of sine, cosine, and tangent. So let's take care of an example of what this means for us. Let's say, for instance, we have cosine of some anga, angle alpha is equal to 3 over 4. Now I do need a little more info about this alpha. Uh, and they usually provide it to you. If they don't, they're giving you an image that's providing it. I'm going to tell you that alpha here is acute. Now, how I remember acute from geometry is that, like, you see something small and you go, oh, it's so acute you know. Uh, that's a little obnoxious, but it always stuck. That was a long time ago. So we have alpha is acute. That means he's the smaller angle of the triangle. Um, don't make fun of my drawing skills. I used a book already for this image of that triangle. So I'm going to draw a triangle. It's decent. Um, we are always talking about right angles for our nice uh, trig functions because we're in reference to the unit circle. Even if we're not using a right angle, we can still use Sokotoa. It gets a little bit messier with some other rules, but we'll see that soon enough. Now, since alpha is the acute one, uh, we could say that we are looking at here a uh, 30, 60, 90 triangle. So here is our alpha. And then this guy has got to be the slightly bigger one. He's more, um, he's not necessarily obtuse, but he's much bigger than alpha. He's the tinier one. Um, so, and if you had swapped it, it would be okay because we're still using a 90 degrees. So we're going to get kind of the same idea going on here. Now, Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So when we talk about adjacent, we're talking about whatever's right next to that angle. In this case, our angle alpha right next to him is the 3. And then it's being divided by 4, which is our hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always that long diagonal across from the 90 degrees of our triangle. So we already got a little bit of a label here. Now, what do they want us to do with this example? Well, I didn't tell you. I want you to find all the trig functions. So some of them are going to be nice. We already have cosine. Let's find sine of alpha. So sine is going to want the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we have an unknown that we do need to figure out. Luckily, our good friend Pythagorean figured out this side for us a long time ago. Whenever we have a right triangle, we can take the sum of the square of the legs. That's a mouthful. So we call this guy A, B, where those guys are legs of the triangle. This is a leg, and this guy is a leg. So we take the sum of the square of the legs, and it is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to plug in this information. Instead, we are missing a leg. So we have 3 squared 
plus unknown leg. You could call it B if you want to. It's up to you. Um, you can call it X as well, whatever you prefer, is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And then we just got to do a little bit of arithmetic. 3 squared is 9. This is a B, not a 6. Please don't get confused by my handwriting. I'm going to subtract that 9 over, and 16 minus 9 is 7. That's gross. We're not going to have a perfect square here, so we're going to take the square root of 7. Now, technically, when we take the square root, we have both a positive and a negative answer. Since we are talking about lengths of measurement here, we are always going to take the positive measurement. Okay? Whenever we talk about the triangle for Sokotoa, we are talking about lengths, and lengths are always positive. When we see a word problem coming up, we'll really drive that idea home. So I'm not going to take the negative square root here. I'm only going to have the positive square root. So now this unknown here is the square root of 7. So when we find sine of alpha, it is the opposite, which in this case the opposite is square root 7, over the hypotenuse, which is 4. Now we'll go ahead and we will find TOA, well, in this case, tangent of alpha, which is opposite over the adjacent. And from there, we can find the rest of, I miswrote there, that should be a square root 7, over 3. So now, after we found these three main guys, the rest of them should follow suit. Um, let's go ahead and do them for good measure, just to get that practice. Uh, I do need to go to another page to do so. Um, I'm actually just going to go ahead and clear off this little tiny corner here. Uh, hopefully you could go back in the video if you need that one more time um, or pause it. Okay, so let's find the other trig functions. Let's go ahead and start with cosecant. Cosecant of alpha. Now, it's going to be the hypotenuse over the opposite. And because we have a radical in the denominator, we cannot leave our answer like this. We must rationalize the denominator. And how you do that is by, because it's square root, you're going to take the square root of 7, multiply top and bottom by it. If anything reduces, go ahead and cancel it. Um, but in this situation, square root 7 times square root 7 is 7, and we can't reduce those rational numbers together, so that's the end. Same idea, let's go ahead and do cotangent, just because it's hanging out right next to him. Um, so we have cotangent of alpha, and we're just going to have the reciprocal, so it's 3 over square root 7. I think it's almost easier sometimes to just think of him as the reciprocal than memorizing the little things in the blue box. You pick whatever makes it nice for you. And same story, we're going to have to rationalize the denominator. We're going to multiply top and bottom by square root 7. So we'll have 3 square root 7 over 7. And there is one more trig function I am forgetting. Good old secant, which is our original guy's reciprocal. And let's just sneak it in right here. We have secant, I can't spell, secant of alpha which is the reciprocal of this guy, which is 4 over 3. And we went ahead and found all of them, which is kind of a nice exploration for us to do. Okay? Let's see another little type of problem uh, where we're asked to solve for unknowns, and they gave us an image. They said, here's your triangle. You know I didn't draw it. Uh, and we want you to find the unknowns in this case, which are little a and little b. We like to use little a and little b to denote the legs of a right triangle. It's very typical in math questions that the hypotenuse gets the c, just because we follow Pythagorean theorem. Don't always get comfortable with that because you know you're going to have that one teacher out there in your future who wants to change up the letters. And when they do, they're just being a butt. You can tell them I said that. Um, typically, we use the A and B for legs, okay? So that's what we're working with here. Um, and at first glance, you might be going, well, what am I going to do with this info? Well, using Sokotoa, and I kind of always, whenever I use some sort of memorized thing, I will write it out every time I use it. So we have Sokotoa, and I'm going to have that written here. 
and I'm going to see which one's going to help me. Either sine, cosine, or tangent is going to help me out in solving for these unknowns. And I have an angle. In this case, it is in degrees, so be careful with your calculators. Make sure you convert them into degrees if you're using it. And we are looking at, well, let's solve for A first, okay? So that would be opposite over, and I do know the hypotenuse, which is kind of nice. So opposite over hypotenuse is sine. So sine of 30, oops, I was going to write alpha. Sine of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And now I can solve for A with a simple multiply that 12 over to the other side. Now, if you don't have sine of 30 memorized, that is okay. You are more than welcome to go and cheat and use a calculator. Uh, we're going to use Desmos in this case just to show you a fantastic free option out there on the Internet. And uh, let's see what sine of 30 degrees is going to give us. And as you can see, they kind of autofill things in for me. And they already know it's going to be 0.5, so it's the one half. You probably should know that from your unit circle. If it's not like a quick knowledge at this point, it depends on your trig class, okay, how critical it is for you to memorize that. I would say you'd want this memorized, especially for calculus. So we got 12 times a half. Um, you can write 0.5 if you're more comfortable with that. And we get 6. So we now know the unknown A here is equal to 6, whatever unit length that is. Now we do need B. So we can go ahead and use either the information that we have, Pythagorean theorem, where we got the square, the sum of the square of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. Or if you're adventurous and you want to use another trig function, you totally could use cosine to help you out. I'm going to use the cosine because I want that practice. You are welcome to use Pythagorean theorem, though. So I'm going to say cosine of 30 degrees. It's going to be the adjacent, so the adjacent guy is B, over the hypotenuse, which is 12. You also could have used tangent, where you use the 6 that you found over B and done tangent of 30. Either way, it all gets you the same thing. Um, we're going to go ahead and solve for B. In this case, we'll multiply that 12 over, and we got 12 times cosine of 30. And it is 30 degrees. Now, this one's going to be a little bit uglier. You know, it's going to be like square root 3 over 2 or something sort. Um, but if you want to, you're welcome to go ahead and use the calculator. I'm going to clear out. I got cosine of 30. Um, Desmos appears to already be in degree form, but if I wanted to change it into radians, there's just this little button here that flops it. Um, if you are using like a standard TI, you're going to have to go into mode to convert it. Okay. So there is my answer. I wonder if Desmos does exact answers. Let's see. I forget if they do. Um, I thought they did. Um, I'll have to remember that another time. So we got 0.866 repeating and you can go ahead and times that by 12 and it'll call upon the previous answer. Oh, you know what? It's mad at me. It wants me to uh, write answer times 12. And I get 10.39. I'm rounding it, of course. So it's not an exact answer. I'm personally not a fan of not exact answers. Uh, you can go ahead and do that if your direction said round. But you see, my directions were vague and they said solve for the unknowns. So I would prefer to you use that memorized information that this is square root 3 over 2, and it's times by 12, which gets us 6 square root 3. And that's from the unit circle. So I prefer exact answers. In fact, if you went ahead and used Pythagorean theorem, well, let's just do it for fun, guys. Uh, we're going to take the sum of the square of the legs equals the square of the hypotenuse, and we would have had 6 squared plus unknown b here. That's my b, that's my 6, and 12 squared. So we'd have 36 here and 144 minus that 36. And let's see what that gets us. I'm always struggling with my arithmetic. 
Uh, well, let's see, I gotta borrow 14. Oh gosh, that's an eight. Uh, that put us at 108, and I'm taking the square root of that. Gross. Um, and then I'd use the factor tree. I bet three goes in there nicely. I'm kind of cheating knowing that three was there. So let's see how many times does three go into there. Uh, 36 times. Oh, beautiful. And 36 is that perfect square. So that's where we get six square root three. Um, so that's another way we could do it when we take the square root. Let's make sure this is proper. I should have wrote square root on both sides that way. This was still equal. And there's how we found the other missing unknown. There's no other unknown. So we finished this problem. Let's do a word problem now. We have a giant redwood tree casts a shadow of 532 feet log. Find the height of the tree if the angle of elevation of the sun is 25.7. So we are looking for the height of a tree, which again, this is coming into that situation. We do end up taking square root sometimes depending on the problem. We always take the positive answer because we're finding a measurement. All right. Now, I need a picture to visualize this. Uh, I'm going to draw my giant redwood tree. You can see I missed my calling as an artist. Uh, so there's my tree. And it says the giant redwood tree casts a shadow. Okay, so there's a sun here. And it is causing this angle of light to make this tree cast a shadow. I'm going to put a shadow in blue, okay, just so that you guys can help visualize it. So there's that shadow. Now, the shadow is 532 feet long. And we'll just, I'm going to use that abbreviation for feet. We probably are going to just drop off our units and at the very end when we answer them go, oh, yeah, we're still working with feet, okay? Find the height of the tree if the angle of elevation, now that's some fancy words there, angle of elevation of the sun is 25.7 degrees. Basically what that's saying is how I described where I drew my sun. So my sun was over here in this corner casting the shadow in this direction. That is causing an angle of elevation. And this angle here is 25.7 degrees. So make sure your calculator is in degrees. I do not expect you to know how to find the approximation of this angle. So that is something a calculator will be needed for. And I'm going to use Desmos and show you how to use it. Okay. So with this information, we need this unknown height. And it's up to us to figure out which trig function is the best one to use with this information. So I have an opposite that I don't know over an adjacent that I do know. I don't actually know what the hypotenuse is, so I don't want to use anybody with hypotenuse involved because that's not a good one. And if you're going toa, toa, yes, tangent of our angle, and we could say theta here, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So that's the one I'm going to choose to use because I'm not going to make any more assumptions in this problem than what they gave me, okay? So they provided us the angle, which is 25.7 degrees. And we are going to plug that into a handy-dandy calculator. It is equal to the opposite, which is unknown to us. I'm just going to call it x, over the adjacent length, which was 532 feet. Whatever our measurement will be should answer in feet, okay? So now this I take to the calculator because I'm going to multiply that 532 to the other side, and I'm just not going to be able to do that in my head. Absolutely not. Maybe someone else could, but not me. So I'm going to jump over. I'm going to clear out any work that I got going on here. I'm going to have, I already forgot it, 532 times my tangent of that 27.5 it's almost 30 degrees so you probably could have come up with a rough approximation knowing your unit circle and now we get this lovely number uh chances are we are going to go ahead and round to the nearest foot just because that seems a little bit appropriate here it did not tell us the rounding technique 
So you could leave your answer exact, but that would be just this information I highlighted. That's not going to help the reader much. So we do need an approximation. I'm going to say 277 feet, which is a pretty darn tall tree. 277 feet. And there's our final answer. What made me pick to round to the nearest feet? Well, I see the angle only went out one decimal place, and the actual cast of the shadow was in a nice rounded hole number. So usually you try to match the problem in their rounding if they don't tell you what it is. I think one more word problem, and we'll call it good. So let's see one more. Let's make it a little bit gross. It's long, but we'll, we'll work through it. So from a point on the ground, 500 feet from the base of a building, an observer finds that the angle of elevation to the top of the building is 24 degrees and that the angle of elevation to the top of the flagpole atop the building is 27 degrees. Find the height of the building and the length of the flagpole. So if you felt in the previous example you didn't really understand what the angle of elevation is, I think this problem will maybe clear up some of those questions, okay? So let's draw a picture. Most of these trig kind of problems where there's like a river or something going on or a building, a tree, we need a picture to visualize it. From a point on the ground, 500 feet from the base of a building. Okay, so I got a building. Here it is. An observer finds that the angle of the elevation to the top of the building is 24 degrees. Now, this is a math problem, so they're not going to get too picky. We're going to say here's our observer, and we are talking from the point on the ground. Technically, there will be some problems out there where you might be looking at the angle of elevation from the height of the observer. In this problem, they don't clarify any of that, so we're not going to worry. So what we're saying, from a point 500 feet from the base of this building, an observer finds that the angle of elevation to the top of the building, that's a beautiful straight line, is 24 degrees. I said 24 and I wrote a 3, don't know where that came from, 24 degrees. Now, and that the angle of elevation to the top of the flagpole, oh cool, we got a little flagpole up here, up top of the building is 27 degrees. I'm going to use a different color just so it pops out to you guys. So this is where my triangles get a little bit ugly. There we go. And that degree there is 27 degrees. Find the height of the building and the length of the flagpole. Okay. So they want two pieces of information. They want this length here, where we're going to subtract out the building, and that will get us the height of this flagpole. So we want building, and we want flagpole. So essentially, we just got two triangles we're working with here. Let's start with the first triangle that we were given. It might be a little bit cleaner for most students. And I'm not, I'm going to abandon my building and my cute little person that I drew and just write the information that was necessary. So that one said we had 24 degrees and that adjacent length was 500 feet. And I can find that unknown. Then the other triangle that is described here, <clears throat> excuse me, is kind of the same story, beautiful triangle. We got 27 degrees, the adjacent length is still 500 feet, and it's going to be some taller unknown here, right? And I'll call them unknown two, this is unknown one, okay? In the end, pretty much we're always going to end up using tangent for these type of questions because it's not worthwhile for us to find the hypotenuse um, unless the problem provided it for us. Okay, so whenever you find that you have an adjacent angle, they don't provide a hypotenuse, tangent is the way to go. So we got the tangent of 24 degrees, make sure you're in degrees, is equal to the unknown, we could call him x, over the hypot, I'm sorry, over the adjacent, and that would be 500. So we can find out what x is. 
And we're totally going to plug this into a calculator. We're going to round to the nearest feet. That'll give a little bit of wiggle room with our flagpole top here, but we're going to just get an approximation. That's what's important here, okay? If they wanted us to be exact, the question should have said so. So make sure you read your directions. Uh, we're going to go ahead and multiply that 500 over to the other side. I'm going to use beautiful Desmos to do this. Uh, we got 500, in this case, times our tangent. We are taking of 24 degrees. And we're going to close our parentheses. And we got about 223, it looks like. And I just rounded it up because that 0.6. So I got 223. This measurement that we find here is in feet because that was the unit that they gave us. Also, it is describing the height of the building. So we found the first piece of information they wanted. Find the height of the building. Done. 223 and the length of the flagpole. Now this next problem is not going to give us the length of the flagpole. This next one in the blue here is going to give us the length of the building and the flagpole. So we'll have to subtract a little bit here. So again, we're gonna go ahead and use tangent. Um, I'm gonna do it in blue just to keep consistent so our brains are thinking, oh, this is a different problem. So we're taking the tangent of 27 degrees, which equals the opposite. We don't know what it is, I'll call it y. I already used x, over 500. Multiply that 500 to the other side, and we are going to be taking 500 times the tangent of 27 degrees. I always close my parentheses because I just some nervous I'll mess up, but you'll see calculators don't need it sometimes. And we got 255, which is good. It should be a bigger uh, length. So we're doing good. We didn't type that in wrong. 255 feet. So y here equals 255 feet. Now, that is not the length of the flagpole. We're going to take 255 and subtract out that 223. And we are going to find that our flagpole, wow, that is one tall flagpole, guys. I'm just double checking my math. Okay, it's a 32 foot long flagpole. Maybe I don't know what typical size of flagpoles are. So that's the information that we needed. Here's our building. And last but not least, our flagpole.